Well, well, welcome to On VJ's playlist. And today we have with us Mahesh Raghunandan. I'm sure he doesn't need an introduction really because his body of work and um, his immense popularity among singer songwriter community of, of the independent music space in India speaks hugely for itself. So firstly, Mahesh, welcome. And thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you so much for having me here, Vijay. Looking forward to our conversations together. Appreciate it. So, uh, Mahesh, uh, to get started with, uh, you and I, we have a very, very common connect uh, somewhere. I mean, we are, you know, we, we hail from extremely stringent uh, South Indian backgrounds. And uh, I'm sure academics, you know, just in short, this whole sense of stability and uh, security must have been inherently drained into our heads, you know, where since we were very little. So when you decided yep. to pursue music, um, first of all, where did that sense of, uh, you know, realization dawn from? Because I'm sure even for you to come to that, come to making that decision would have been a hustle in itself. Um, so firstly, how did you convince yourself? I mean, well, of course, external factors, uh, you know, this excluded for now. But how did you first convince yourself yeah. that you wanted to take this switch? Yeah, um, I, you're, you're absolutely right. Like coming from like a middle class South Indian family, there is this sense of responsibility that's put into you when you are deciding what choices you want to make in your life. Um, I, I feel that's kind of misleading, but I think that's like for like a, you know, an older Mahesh to talk about, but, um, but there was this sense of, uh, fulfillment that, uh, you thought you would get if there was, there is this job that's always paying you and, you know, you've got like, uh, you've got like a set plan, you know what to do, you know exactly what to do when you wake up. Uh, where to go, what to say to things, and like, how to respond to a mail. And I, I came from a similar background when it comes to like my family put, uh, motivating me to take certain decisions in terms of my education, but also where my interests lay. I was a nerd from the very beginning, uh, so I was I was kind of good at studies, I guess. And the more and more the good results started showing up, the more and more the parents realized, hey, he's good at it, so he should be doing this a lot more. And somewhere along the way, my interest for music took its own path, and, and there was this tug of war that came in. So you're right, at the beginning, it was a fight within myself. Like, can I actually do this? Can I quit what, or can I redefine what it really means to, you know, understand what I should be doing with my life, like how I should handle it, what are the risks, am I okay with the risk? So it was a, it was quite a battle. But then I remember I was doing music professionally while I was already in college and I finished my graduation and I was working as an IT developer um, in, this, in this company and I worked there for a year. And I, during this year, I used to travel about five hours every day because I live very far away from town and the office was way, way, way across the city. And one year of traveling five hours a day for doing something that you don't really want to do made me realize that I'd rather not do anything else at all. I, it doesn't matter to me anymore. Um, you know, how much suffering me quitting this job could give me, but like, I just want to pursue what gives me peace on the inside. And, and it was this acceptance of all the hustle that I might be bringing myself to, you, you know, sort of making that decision of, of being a full-time musician. Um, at that moment, I felt very safe with all of those risks more than the security that I had with this job. And that's kind of when I chose to quit everything, I mean, plan it out properly and ask people and find out, get opinions and, and, and sort of deal with, you know, how best to, to make that happen. But that's kind of when I decided I'm going to do this full time. 
But like I, uh, you know, I, I want to come back to a previous question, uh, Mahesh, here, because we sure. hail from such backgrounds, um, and right. in South Indian households, I mean, getting into the IT field is the deal. Like nothing less than nothing less than that would do. Uh, so for you to quit yeah. a, your full time job and then to pursue something which um, which is mostly considered as a side hustle or you know just uh, just a hobby you know in south indian households right uh, I, I was watching your ted That's talk right. back in 2020 where you spoke about how you were so content with wanting to settle for uh, the uncertainty and you know the sense of doubt that you know going artistic would bring but how did you really embrace yourself for all this? And more, more importantly, how uh, crucial was it to explain it to your immediate loved ones about your decision and about, you know, what, how would it impact everybody at large? Right. So uh, coming to your uh, question, the latter question, it was very difficult to get this point across that I want to do music to my family. Uh, number one, because I do come from a humble background in terms of, you know, like whatever, whatever I have and whatever I don't, let's put it that way. And, and it, it does make sense for you to have a certain sense of security. Uh, you know, if, if, if you, if a layman looked at life from, you know, my eyes behind my eyeballs, I guess. Um, and initially there was this strong conflict between my family and myself. Um, about this decision that I'd made because I had made the decision all by myself and I was not going to negotiate that for anything else. And that's quite an arrogant stand to make in one sense. Um, but at the same time, I was in complete awareness of what I was communicating. I, expressing myself is something that music has taught me more than anything. And so I guess music you know, sort of showed me the way and I told them it doesn't matter what you think my concerns are, you will see me handle every single one of those things. I will, I will make sure that every single responsibility that I need to have, I'm going to be responsible for it. Like, I, I don't need anything from you. I have everything that I want uh, in just this, in, in making just this decision. And it's, they still didn't listen to it. They still weren't okay with it. But Time passed, about a year, and a year and a half, two years passed, and three years passed, and then finally my parents decided to uh, come to a gig of mine for the first time, and it was at this venue called uh, B Flat, which is where I started off. It's not there anymore. It's an iconic venue in Bangalore. I'm sure a lot of us know about it, and and that was the first gig they came to, and there were a lot of musicians around, and the venue, uh, the people there from like the people who were, you know, taking care of the tickets to the bartenders. I've known them for such a long time. So it was like everybody was excited, like, you know, my mom and dad were coming. And so when they did come to that gig, there was this level of acceptance that they received from this community that I've, that I've spent my time, my years with. And, and that was very powerful. And I remember my dad, my mom telling me that my dad got emotional on the way back saying, Okay, I get what he is doing now. And that was a huge breakthrough for me. Because after that, I have never been questioned of my intentions. More so, I've been trusted a lot more of what I'm doing and supported because of it. Uh, simply because I took the stance of saying, hey, I know this is scary, but, you know, it's scary for me too. But I'm okay with it. Are you okay with it? Like, that's all that matters. Um, so I hope that answers the question that you were asking. But of course, you know, Mahesh, uh, yeah, I, I was on mute. Right. Uh, but of course, Mahesh, um, you know, coming back to a little bit about your process and, you know, about how you began, um, what were your early right. exposure to, uh, you know, uh, who are the artists you grew up listening to? Because I believe you're a massive John Mayer and fan Sinatra fan. So how much of an impact were yeah. all these uh, influential musicians in, uh, you know, in your process? Right. I started out listening to a lot of, a um, lot of the radio. I used to fall asleep to Radio City, um, just you know, at nine, 
9.30 where there's the top 40 charts that are going on and, and you know, Casey Kasem and Ryan Seacrest doing it over the weekend. And that was my, my way of consuming music. It was the radio. But then as I became a teenager and I started being exposed to artists like John Mayer, John Mayer was one of those artists that led me to my journey of songwriting. I, I could not understand the words he was using, but it had a, a very strong uh, uh, effect on me to find out what he's trying to say. And this fascination led me to me, you know, becoming a songwriter. But I was very lucky to be exposed to some of the greats uh, for whatever reasons, such as like Frank Sinatra, Ray Charles, and, and Chet Baker, um, and, and all these wonderful, Stevie Wonder, all these wonderful artists from, from the 70s, 80s, 60s, uh, all the way through. And I think more than me trying to sound like somebody, me failing at trying to sound like Frank Sinatra and Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder has made me a better musician. And, and so that's, that's the kind of music I grew up with. And, and I, it, it's sure in college and, you know, and beyond, I had my rock, my prog era of, of, of things. Um, but these musicians who had very strong, impactful words to share and impactful stories to share have always had like a special place in my heart. And they inspire me even today. Uh, in me, in the way that I write songs, in the way that I see music. Um, also for, for Mahesh, actually, but because for conditioning as such, we, uh, you know, humility, you know, becomes also a very uh, inherent part of our personality. And um, I've read an interview of yours where uh, you are very um, cautious about how you want to be seen also as uh, a musician. So you don't like sounding pompous in, uh, you know, letting people know how you think of yourself as a musician. Um, you very fairly say that uh, I am still in the process. I don't like to call myself as a musician who knows it all. I still like to believe that I am somebody still in the learning, still in the process of discovering new things every day. So, um, where do these inspirations come from or you know what 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 do you always look forward to when uh, you are trying to you know make music right um uh, just to uh, uh, refer to the humility aspect of it i don't think that i am being i don't claim to be humble when i put my you know point of view out it's rather that I don't want to take responsibility for your claim that I am good or I am bad. Uh, right. I think you know it's 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 maybe in, it, it's infectious negatively to my creative process in one way or the other. I shouldn't be affected by uh, whether somebody thinks I'm good or not. And yeah. and a lot of people mistake that for uh, humility, and I understand that it's very sweet of them to do that, but. Uh, honestly, from the intention of where it's coming from, it's definitely not the case. Uh, I'm not being Mother Teresa uh, as as much as I wish I I, I could be. Um, God bless her. Uh, but coming to your to your question, the kind of thought process that I am inspired by is from the the kind of people that I've worked with to begin with. I yeah. do believe that as long as you believe there's something to learn, something to get better at you will always have a motivation to practice. The day that you decide you've learned it all, you just decide that I've, I'm, I've fallen out of love with this thing. And I don't want that to happen. And in, in, in that sense, I believe that I have a long, long, long way to go. And I think until my very last breath, I'm gonna consider myself a student of this, this uh, legacy of art. But also because of the kind of musicians that I've worked with. They're incredible. I'm somebody who's not had like a formal training in music, but like uh, in Blushing Satellite, I I used to be the vocalist uh, at Blushing Satellite and there's Rama, Arjun, Prabhu, all these musicians are absolutely incredible in what they do. This is some of the best musicians in the country. And when you're, and of course, Leslie Charles, who plays the bass for Thermal and a Quarter, yeah. who produced my EP, uh, as well as Blushing Satellite's EP, when you're among musicians of such uh, intellect and intelligence and, and, and such wisdom, I think 
it's quite natural for you to sort of quieten down and listen to what they have to say. And I think a lot of my, you know, self opinion has diminished because of the fact that I've spent, you know, time with these wonderful people, despite the fact that they've never made me feel that way. They've always been like, even if I made a mistake, they will teach me just the way they would treat me if I was doing a great job, which is, uh, which is beautiful. I've been very lucky. That's, that's basically what I'm trying to say. Well, uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, the amount and, you know, the, you know, just the whirlpool of talent that Bangalore as a city has, you know, I mean, it's so rightly uh, hailed as the, the, you know, the capital of independent music. You have some really amazing acts mushrooming and, you know, popping up from different corners of the city. And I'm sure when you say, you know, that experiences enrich you, your interactions with people around you enrich you, I'm sure there is so much to you know look forward to on an everyday basis or possibly on an hourly basis just in the city right. itself because uh, the city is constantly brimming with talent um so how do you look at uh, the energy of the city which you know time and again uh, becomes a huge part of how you uh, collaborate and how you create with uh, musicians and talents in the city right uh, yes it is a uh, melting pot of talents for sure not just of music but all different kinds of art ah, yeah. and i see it as a beautiful opportunity for collaboration um in fact this is a, a this is an inadvertent segue or a plug if i might uh, of my recent single realize which was yeah. about my idea of what bangalore is about i grew up in the outskirts of bangalore among forests and and, and, you know, just like quiet neighborhood and whatnot. But then if you check out the music video of that, you will see a whole bunch of names at the very beginning uh, showing the level of collaboration that, 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 that has gone into uh, that piece of art, that piece of video. And that alone shows that there's such good talent here and there's so much opportunity for us to uh, take advantage of. Sometimes it feels like um, because of this, this contrast and this versus this different kinds of arts being there, they might be in conflict with each other. And I understand that, for example, like th there's a lot of like karaoke gigs are happening, like the rock dudes become like annoyed, like saying, what's up with that? You see, so, uh, sure. I, I get that. And I think it's very normal when it's such a big city, but I feel that as long as we're able to acknowledge the common nature of our love for this art and the community that we're building. I think there's a lot that could be got out of it, not just in terms of uh, people's careers, but as an industry itself, as an independent music and art industry itself and what it could do uh, to the livelihood of artists, you know, 10 years from now or, or the generation after me. And I feel the, the musicians of this day and age need to sort of look at that and embrace their city in that sense, in that sense, uh, in order to, you know, like, like do a lot more. And, and that's my opinion about, about Bangalore and, and the scene. Well, since we spoke of collaborations, let's talk about our sanctuary with the fortune and with Takar Nabambika. First of all, what a beautiful song. And the fact that an artist from Arunachal Pradesh and an artist from Karnataka are also collaborating with a duo from Kerala. Wow, I, I, I cannot even imagine, you know, the, the synergies coming together, the, the exchange of culture and the exchange of, you know, the, the creativity that's, you know, that, you know, could have been present between the three of you. Um, so I want to first ask you, how was the experience of working with these two fine acts? Because they are very, very good at what they do. They are very good in the music that they make. Um, how do you describe the process of just getting acquainted with them and then creating something so wonderful with them? Right. Um, I, I got a mail some time ago from the fortune saying that we're working on a dance pop, a, a disco pop track. Um, and, and we needed somebody, a male vocalist for it. And they, they'd mentioned Tucker is also part of it. And I'd met Tucker 
a long time ago. He had done sound for me when I toured uh, to Delhi in 2017. He was working as a sound engineer at the venue. And, and I'd met Tucker then, and, and we knew each other as musicians then. And as, as soon as I saw Tucker's name, I was like, I, I, to be honest, I'd not heard of the fortune until they got in touch with me. Um, and I, it's not because uh, I'm generally like detached from you know all the different things that are happening. Like you said in the previous question, there's so much happening. Um, and when I saw Tucker, I, I was, was very interested to find out what he's up to. And that's generally how it goes with musicians. Like if you see a friend of yours doing something, you just wanna know like, hey, can you play that? Like what's happening? So uh, it was that sort of an interest. And, and I heard the song and the first thing that I noticed was that it's completely away from my comfort zone. Uh, my, my music is very different from the kind of track that this was envisioned to be uh, from the producers. And I like things that are challenging, especially as a vocal coach and somebody who's constantly like trying to get better and trying to learn things. I found that to be a very interesting challenge to take, but also because the song was so good. So uh, it's such a Maroon 5 sort of a vibe, at least in, in my head. Okay. And that's something that I really wanted to explore. And, and I said yes, and it was so smooth. It was so, it's, it's, it's amazing when there's a creative process where there is no sense of like, hey, there's no sense of ego. Like, you know, we're all serving the purpose of the song. Like, does that part need to be there? Okay, it's not, okay, do we need harmonies here? And I love a creative process which is as objective as that. Someone with OCD, I, I like, you know, figuring puzzles out and like doing it like the right way. And, um, and so it just turned out to be um, a beautiful time together. And we had an Italian singer, the female vocalist, yeah. um, who was also uh, featured in the song. And as somebody who's, a, who's also a songwriter, it was a very interesting experience for me to write from the female's perspective of this particular song of you know two people coming together and spending the night together and whatnot. And so, all in all, a very beautiful learning process, a very fun song to sing along to and dance to. And I got to do it with a whole bunch of friends that, that are very talented. So I think it's a win-win situation for me. <laughs> well, if it's a win-win situation for you, it's a win-win situation for we as listeners. Because for us, so every time, I mean, for, I mean what really excites me about uh, the independent music space especially is every time I you know, know of uh, wonderful talents coming together and collaborating. So, so collaborations are really something I look forward to. Um, Mahesh, since you spoke about being a vocal coach, um, of course, before uh, we uh, decided to, you know, really set up this interview, you told me about how you are taking classes on a daily basis and you have these right. uh, class online classes that, you know, that you take. Uh, so would you want our viewers who are watching right. this interview, uh, would you like to give them a little more background about what how about how you give back to the society all absolutely um this is something that i'm really really passionate about i've always been a vocal technique nerd um but i started something uh, during the pandemic i started something called rewire the voice this is an approach to singing that that is something that i have worked on and 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 built on over the past few years which is basically a mix of mindfulness practices which is being in the moment and um, vocal technique which is using your body in in, in different ways uh, so that you can manipulate sound and ear training which is to allow your ears to you know like understand music as a language and I have always been hyped about spending time with my own voice or somebody else's voice and them trying to discover the best version that it could be. Now, the reason why it excites me is because you are not trying to change your voice, you are trying to discover the fullness and the full potential and completeness of your voice. How high I can go, how low I can go, how loud, quiet, how well I can express something. and me being able to assist and witness 
somebody who is who is going through this process of self-discovery using their mind, body, and awareness in this way is 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 quite a privilege. And and I have had the opportunity of of working with loads of singers over the past few years, uh, from beginners to professional singers, from Carnatic singers to Western classical singers, in helping them discover this language of sound just as a language of sound, not from a cultural point of view or a specific language, but just about yourself, your body and your mind and your awareness. And um, I do a lot of workshops. I do online coaching. I work with students on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I am traveling. I'm going on tour, and I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of workshops while I'm doing that. And so I'm excited to meet all the different kinds of singers and musicians that are out there. and. And I guess this Rewire the Voice is just another thing that makes me want to fall in love with music more and more. And, and it's just like the, the perfect third wheel of the trifecta, if you will. <laughs> well, uh, you spoke about touring and um, I, I cannot even begin to comprehend as to how the idea of touring and performing live, uh, you know, to uh, a packed venues and you know to a huge exciting audience I, I cannot comprehend that still that musicians and artists are now feeling collectively um you just had a very very wonderful uh you know time with cinema of excess i believe at fandom uh, you know recently right. uh, first of all how was that yep. feeling to get back to the stage again because two years of the pandemic has been so anxiety inducing for a lot of artists out there and i i, I really cannot uh you know, fathom how, what it would have felt for all of you to, you know, now be taking the stage again and performing again. So how do you describe this phase now Absolutely. of getting back on the track? It's, it's extremely exciting and extremely intimidating. I, it's, it's one thing to be annoyed by your own four walls of your room in the two years of the pandemic, <laughs> um, and to hate your own home and lose the feeling of home. But it's another thing to sort of get out of that perceptual conditioning that you've had for years, staying inside, and then going out to a whole bunch of people and and still, you know, deliver a performance that you want to deliver. And, you know, not like really to like, you know, like do your best or whatever, but, you know, you want to stay in this... I, I really missed doing gigs. I used to... That was my primary source of income before the pandemic and it was something that that I was craving so much and the more and more that gig dates started coming close the more and more I started feeling nervous and I started feeling like there is a sense of dread that I'm having about going on stage and immediately I stopped myself on the on the track and I'm, and I told myself it doesn't matter this is so amazing that finally after two years you get to go up on stage and you get to be the loudest person who is making sound. Um, and that's quite the privilege to have. And so I was very, very, um, I, I, I couldn't wait for the performance to begin until it began. And I couldn't wait for it to be done when, you know, uh, when, when it did. Because it was like a huge adrenaline rush. I enjoyed it so much, but the roller coaster was such a fancy one that you don't want too much of it all at the same time. So that's the best way I can describe the recent gig at fandom. <laughs> well, uh, Mahesh, uh, since uh, it's actually the day and age of uh, amazing singer songwriters, suddenly it's, uh, you could say it's their, uh, their moment of reckoning. If I can ask you, who are some of the most wonderful Indian acts that um, in your opinion, um, that you like listening to, or you know, you just like uh, the way they put out their, their, you know, their music out there. Absolutely. I mean, one artist you've already mentioned. He's one of my most favorite sing singer songwriters. Uh, he's from Cinema of Excess, Anirudh Ravi. But then there is uh, musicians like Kashni, um, Kashni Nair. So yeah, there is uh, Mira Desai, such yeah. a beautiful voice, such a beautiful songwriter. Um, of course, Sanjita, uh, it's, it's just incredible the level of talent Sanjita and Kamakshi and, and all these wonderful women have. And um, Siddharth Bendy from Hyderabad is a wonderful oh, yes. songwriter himself. Amazing. And, yep. 
yeah there's a lot of good young talent that's that's showing up and i'm Absolutely. and i'm super pumped about it especially with the singer songwriter stuff not that i i'm not looking out for all the rest of the music but it's very nice when you come across an artist that is totally in your space as like you know like almost it's intimidating to find a singer songwriter who's that good but that's the best feeling because you know you see like oh my god there's such good talent out there and so much to learn so much to get better at and so these are some of the artists that that I really really enjoy listening to but of course there's summer there's sabi summer medhi sabi singh yeah. um there's so many dhruv vishwanath such yeah. good musicians here in this country and i'm so glad that we are all doing such good stuff um in my opinion I, I, except mine i think that everybody else needs to decide if whether it's good or not <laughs> well uh mahesh before we wrap up i just quickly want to ask uh, what's next in the pipeline um, of course you've already had uh, two wonderful releases in 2022 with realize and with our sanctuary um but uh, yeah. what's next um so realize was the precursor to my upcoming ep which is titled change and i am super excited about it because number one i i'm very fortunate that i've been given a grant an artist grant by the bombay jazz club and music for good uh wow. so that i can make this record happen which is incredible and it's it's amazing that it's somebody would put so much trust in my expression i'm very grateful um i i'm also working on collaborating with a lot of incredible musicians for that record which i can't really reveal much about right now but uh which i'm super excited about but also i'm going on tour very soon sometime in april may and i will be putting the dates out super soon and it's going to be exciting because there's huge thing things planned with the tour as well and so it looks like an, a very busy an exciting year and i think i deserve all the pain and suffering from that work because i've just been sitting on my ass for two years <laughs> <laughs> well firstly congratulations on the grant uh, mahesh and all i can say is Thank you. we are we are all here for good music and we are all here for good things to happen to good people so onwards and upwards from here mahesh it's it's been um, Really fabulous Absolutely. chatting with you this Thank afternoon, you so and I cannot wait for all the wonderful music that you're going to bring our way. Thank you so much for allowing me to giving me the opportunity to express myself, Vijay. I hope uh, I, we can do this again sometime, and I, I'm looking forward to all the rest of the artists that you're going to be having a conversation with. Good luck with everything. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Super